In this video, we're going to talk about colligative properties. Uh, and colligative properties are the effect of the quantity of solute on the physical properties of a solution. And so what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about things like um, physical properties of a solution would be things like vapor pressure, boiling point, freezing point, um, osmotic pressure. These are all physical properties of a solution that can be affected by a solute. And what we discover is that the, the, the that is that these properties depend only on the concentration of the solute, not on the chemical properties. So we'll see that these physical properties will vary linearly as a function of the amount of, of solute that we add to them. And, uh, and that's how we're going to look at the colligative properties. The first colligative property we're going to look at is vapor pressure lowering. And vapor pressure lowering is a decrease in the vapor pressure of a solvent due to the presence of a solute. So if you remember, vapor pressure is so if you have a liquid uh, solution here and this consists of a solvent plus a solute the vapor pressure of this mixture is the amount of gas that forms above the liquid so if you put this in a closed container let's say this is water for example let's say this water is in a closed container some of that water is going to evaporate and that evaporated water is going to form a gas above the liquid and the pressure of that gas is the vapor pressure. That's what we call the vapor pressure. And so what, what, tend, what, what happens when we add a solute to that water, let's say that we add some salt, the solute causes the vapor pressure to go down. And there's a, there's a reason for this. So if we were to sort of draw this out schematically, if we were to take the mole fraction of A, where this is the mole fraction, and um, actually, let's not, let's not make it A. Let's make this the mole fraction of the solvent. And this is the vapor pressure. So if we were to have uh, 1 and 0, meaning we have this 1 being pure solvent and the um, 0 being pure solute, we have 100% solute, meaning we have no solvent left, we get a line that looks like this. And the basically what happens is as the as the mole fraction of the solvent goes down, the vapor pressure goes down. So as we go in this direction, the vapor pressure goes down. And the way that you can think of this is that uh, this, in this direction, this is the mole fraction of the solvent. In this direction, this the mole fraction of the solute is going up. And so what is the reason for this? Why does the vapor pressure goes down as we, as we increase the mole fraction of the solute? Well, if you look at the solution, so if this is our solution sitting in our beaker, as we start to put ions in there, those some of those ions are going to sit at the surface. And basically, they're going to block water molecules from escaping. So in essence, you can think of the surface as being a mixture now, some being water molecules and others being ions that are in the solution. And the more ions you put in there, the less surface spots are going to be water molecules. And so therefore, it's going to be harder for the water to escape. And so that's why the vapor pressure goes down. Another way to think of it is that the ions kind of hold the water molecules into the solution. But um, both pictures work um, for explaining that. But this graph is really important. And it turns out that this linear relationship is sort of the theoretical. And that's what we're going to work with in this video. Although in reality, what we find is that it's not always perfect. We get some, we do sometimes get a curved uh, trend here and this is what we would call a real solution. We're not going to worry about the real solution. This has to do with um, the s interactions between the solute and the solvent. But um, we are going to work with the theoretical which just gives a linear relationship between the vapor pressure and the concentration of the solute. So the equation that's important here is that delta P is equal to the um, pressure, the vapor pressure of the solvent minus the vapor pressure of the solute. And so the vapor pressure of the pure solvent is this point, where we have 100% uh, solvent. That's where that vapor pressure at, at a mole fraction of one for the solvent is going to be the vapor pressure of the solvent. And then the um, oh, I'm sorry, this should be the solution. And so the, the vapor pressure of the solution is going to be any point along this curve depending on the concentration of, the, of the, the solute. So delta P is the difference between 
the vapor pressure of the, the, the solvent and the vapor pressure of the solution. So this is the delta P that we're talking about when we talk about delta P. That's that difference. And there's a law that governs this, and it's called Raoult's Law. So Raoult's Law says that the pressure of a solution, the vapor pressure of a solution, is going to equal the, um, the vapor pressure of the solvent times the mole fraction of the solvent in the solution. So this is the mole fraction of the solvent in the solution. And that makes sense, right? So um, as the mole fraction of the solvent goes down, the vapor pressure of the solution is going to go down. However, um, when we look at Raoult's law, we often want to get this in terms of the solute. So can we, can we get Raoult's law in terms of the solute? And we can. And so if we go back to our delta P expression, delta P was equal to the vapor pressure of the solvent minus the vapor pressure of the solution. And so what we can substitute in here is that the we have the vapor pressure of the solvent minus, and then we can take our equation here for the vapor pressure of the solution, which is that the uh, vapor pressure of the solvent times the mole fraction of the solvent will give us the mole fraction of the solution. So that's going to give us our delta P. Now, if we change this around a little bit, what we get is we get delta P is equal to the vapor pressure of the solvent, which I can pull out. I can pull that out of both sides, and I get 1 minus the mole fraction of the solvent. Uh, in parentheses. And so if you look at mole fraction, the mole fraction in this case um, is going to be the sum of the solute and the solvent. So the mole fraction of the solvent plus the mole fraction of the solute has to equal 1, right? So the whole solution has to add up to uh, a total of 1. If we reorganize this, we see that the mole fraction of the solute is equal to 1 minus the mole fraction of the solvent. And so this is what is in our parentheses. So what we can say is that delta P is equal to P of the solvent times the mole fraction of the solute. And so now we have a simple equation in terms of the solute for what delta P is. And remember, delta P is not the vapor pressure of the solution. Delta P is the difference in the vapor pressure Um, of the solution relative to the uh, vapor pressure of the solvent. So when you solve for delta P, which is what this equation will give you, that is going to give you the delta P, and then we have to use the original vapor pressure of the solvent to, to work out the vapor pressure of the solution. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. So let's like, take a look at some uh, lecture problems that involve vapor pressure lowering. Okay, so in our first example, it says a solution of 0.515 grams of naphthalene in a 60.8 gram, in 60.8 grams of chloroform is prepared. Calculate the vapor pressure of the solution at 20 degrees Celsius if the vapor pressure of pure uh, chloroform is 156 millimeters of mercury at 20 degrees C. So we know that the delta P here is going to equal the pressure of the, the vapor pressure of the pure solvent times the mole fraction of the solute. And so our first job is to get the mole fraction of the solute. And so in this case, the mole fraction is going to equal moles of what we're dissolving, which is C10H8, divided by the moles of the C10H8 plus the moles of the solvent, which is the CHCl3. So our job is to get the, the moles of both of, of both of these things. And to do that, we have to convert the uh, masses into moles. So we take 0.515 grams. We multiply by uh, one mole for every 128.17 grams. And we get for this 4.02 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. And we can do the same thing for the moles of the chloroform. So we take our 60.8 grams times our 119.38 grams for every one mole 
and we get 0 0.5093 moles. So if we plug this in for mole fraction, we're going to get 4.02 times 10 to the minus 3 moles divided by 0 0.5093 moles plus 4.02 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. And so this is going to give us a mole fraction of 7.83 times 10 to the minus 3 is our mole fraction. So now we can calculate delta P. So we have the the vapor pressure, and in this case, uh, it doesn't. It turns out that the it doesn't matter what the vapor pressure is. It can be in any units. Um, so in this case, we'll just work in millimeters of mercury. So delta P in this case is going to equal our 156 millimeters of mercury, which is the um, vapor pressure of the pure solvent, which it says pure solvent there, times the mole fraction of the solute, which we calculated is 7.83 times 10 to the minus 3 is our mole fraction. And so our delta P in this case is going to equal uh, 1.22 millimeters of mercury. And so if we want to get the um, if we want to get the vapor pressure of the solution, we have to take our pure vapor pressure, 156 millimeters of mercury, and subtract the delta P, which is what it's going to change by when we have this con when we have this concentration of the C10H8, and what we get is 154.7 millimeters of mercury, or if you round it, 155 millimeters of mercury. So that's an example of how you can use, um, how you can perform a vapor pressure lowering calculation. And this last step, you have to remember that what we're basically saying here is there's the l vapor pressure lowering trend. This number up here is 156 millimeters of mercury. And so as we work our way back to this uh, mole fraction, this uh, at this mole fraction of the solute, we're going to have a slightly lower vapor pressure. And the difference between the regular vapor pressure and this vapor pressure of the solution is 1.22. So we have to subtract 1.22 from the 156 to get that uh, slightly lower vapor pressure. Okay, let's take a look at the second one. This one says the vapor pressure of water at 70 degrees Celsius is 234 millimeters of mercury. If 725 grams of sucrose is dissolved in one liter of pure water at 70 degrees Celsius, what is the vapor pressure of the solution? And it says that assume the density of water is one gram per mil. So again, our job here is to look at the delta P, figure out the delta P, and that is to get the vapor pressure of the solvent times the mole, pra mole fraction of the solute. And so we have to get both of these. And so the delta P, we already know the vapor pressure is 234 millimeters of mercury. I'm sorry, the, the pressure of the pure solvent is 234 millimeters of mercury. So now our next job is to get the mole fraction of the solute. And so if we want to get the mole fraction of the solute, we can take our 725 grams of sucrose divided by the molecular weight, which is 342 grams for every one mole. And so this is going to give us a 2.12 moles. And now for the water, it's a little bit challenging. We have one liter of water, but it says assume the density is one gram per mil. So what we can do is we can convert this one liter to milliliters, and then for every one mil, we have one gram. And we still need to get the number of moles, so the next step here is to use the molecular weight of water, which is 18.02 grams for every one mole. And so when you calculate that, you get 55.49 moles. So we can calculate a mole fraction of the solute by saying that we have 2.12 moles divided by 55.49 moles plus 2.12 moles. And so this is going to equal... 0 0.03680 or 0 0.0368 is our mole fraction. And so we can plug that in 0 0.0368 and we get a delta P equal to 8.61 millimeters of mercury. And to get the vapor pressure of the solution, we subtract our delta P from our vapor pressure of the pure solvent. 
and this gives us uh, 225 millimeters of mercury as our final answer. So that shows you how you can use Raoult's law to work with vapor pressure lowering problems.